The Gilded Age, Episode 4. A new law is going to be passed that allows George to build his new station in the city, but George wants more than that. On back of Mr. Morris's death, George met up with Charles Fane and gave him his condolences. He then invited Charles to his office, and off screen, he told Charles that he would help him recover some of his losses if Charles would convince his wife Aurora to help bring Bertha into society. Aurora went over to the Russells' home and suggested that they have a luncheon with Ward McAllister. Ward McAllister is a powerful man who works closely with Mrs. Astor. So basically, next week's luncheon is going to be very important for Bertha. In the meantime, Aurora also invited Bertha to the Academy of Music for a concert in aid of the Red Cross. Bertha's goal is to get onto the board of the Red Cross. The biggest obstacle is that Anne Morris is one of the Red Cross's biggest patrons, and Anne Morris blames George and Bertha for her husband's death. But Bertha mentioned their interest at the symphony, and Aurora said that might work if they play it carefully. That was the main plot of the episode, but it was far from the only thing that happened. Pumpkin ran off and Mrs. Bruce found him. Instead of just walking him across the street to Ada, Bertha had them take Pumpkin inside, clean him, and deliver a notification letter. Ada wanted to go get him, but Agnes said no. So Marion offered, and Agnes said, No! I'll not have that mutt turned into a link between these houses. Bannister, you go fetch it. When Bannister went over there to get Pumpkin, the Russells were upstairs changing, so Church gave Bannister a quick tour bolt downstairs and upstairs. Church gained a lot of intel as to what Agnes likes to eat and when, as well as how Agnes likes the table to be set. This suggests that sometime soon, Bertha will dine Agnes, and Agnes may be pleasantly surprised. Hmm. Over my dead body. Marion has a crush on Tom Rakes, and Tom Rakes wants her very much. But Ada reminded Marion that But it'll be simpler if you can find your beloved among Mr. McAllister's 400. Apparently, Tom is doing well for himself. He moved to the city, has a new job, and he has found his way into society. Will that be good enough for Agnes? Probably not. But he is trying, and Marion was impressed. Unfortunately, Peggy's family was not impressed by Marion. Marion's ignorance came to light a few times this episode. First, she went into Bloomingdale Brothers with a reluctant Peggy. Marion was oblivious to the racist looks that Peggy received. Marion then suggested that she and Mrs. Chamberlain leave together, but Mrs. Chamberlain advised Marion against that for her own sake. So Mrs. Chamberlain is good people. Marion's biggest mistake happened in Brooklyn. Though her heart was in a good place, she went to Peggy's parents' home uninvited. What are you doing here? I thought I'd surprise you. You succeeded. Marion assumed that they needed help since they are black, so she brought them used boots. It was very awkward. The irony is that Peggy is part of the black elite, so she is living at the Van Rynes by choice, whereas it is Marion who is living off of Agnes's money. Peggy heard back from the other paper, so she met up with Fortune. Fortune is going to publish one of her stories, and he asked her to write a political piece about how women do not have the right to vote. Peggy's mother, Dorothy, was born a free woman, but Peggy's father, Arthur, was born a slave. Now he owns a pharmacy, which he had hoped to pass down to Peggy. That seems unlikely, as Peggy is set on carving out her own destiny, and it's a noble one. Not only is she choosing writing over the family business, Peggy also turned down the higher-paying job with the Christian advocate so as to work for the New Globe. And it's worth noting that Peggy's mother wants to hook her up with someone named Paul, but she denied that. Plus, Peggy and Fortune had a moment. Jack was not so lucky. Jack still hasn't gotten the hint, so he continued to pursue Bridget, but she shunned him away. Later on, we learned that Bridget was abused by a man, and her mother let it happen. Mrs. Bauer is now taking on sort of a motherly role to Bridget, just as Ada is doing for Marion. Marion met Mrs. Chamberlain at Bloomingdale Brothers, and Mrs. Chamberlain sent her a gift. Marion chose to return it instead of telling Agnes who it was from. Ada told Marion to hand in at the door, but Marion likes Mrs. Chamberlain, so she went inside and they continued to bond. Back at home, Ada and Oscar told Marion that Mrs. Chamberlain was Mr. Chamberlain's mistress, and that they had a child out of wedlock. So that is why society rejects her. Something is up with Mr. Watson. Mrs. Bruce saw him walk off. He spied on a woman named Mrs. McNeil entering a home, and later on, Mrs. Bruce asked him if he was okay. If I had to guess, Mr. Watson was once in love, and maybe she loved him too. Watson may have been below her in society, and thus she was either forced or chose to marry someone else. 
Larry told George that Oscar Van Ryn is looking for a dinner invitation, but George pointed out that Oscar refused their invitations when they were in trouble with the aldermen. George believes that Oscar simply wants to land Gladys since the Russells are wealthy, and he is right. Unfortunately, Gladys has fallen for Oscar's charm. Speaking of Gladys, Bertha fired Miss Grant since she believed that Miss Grant had lost control of Gladys. She is considering hiring a new governess. George suggested that she hire a new maid instead, someone who could accompany Gladys when she goes out. And Larry went a different direction, implying that Gladys should be free to do as she pleases without someone looking over her shoulder. The person who should be looking over her own shoulder is Bertha. Turner snuck into George's room and undressed. She climbed into bed and attempted to sleep with him. Turner wants more than that, though. Turner wants to replace Bertha. Unfortunately for her, George is head over heels in love with Bertha, so he denied Turner. But he didn't fire her, and he kept her transgression a secret. Although she wanted more, Turner may have considered that a win. Therefore, when Bertha left for the Academy of Music, Turner smirked at George. The show ended with a symphony, and I couldn't help but wonder if George was visiting Turner's sanctuary. <laughs>